the things I missed the most about being in isolation all spring was baseball. How can you not love going to the ballpark on a Friday evening and enjoying this view? I mean, check that out. Beautiful puffy clouds, green grass, the ballpark on a Friday afternoon, and we missed it. Some of my friends are now getting to stream summer tournament games. That's not not where I get to be. I don't get to do those summer tournament games, and so I've missed my streaming season this year. Hopefully, Major League Baseball will get to do some, at least some televised games in the next month or so, but I've missed baseball. Today, I'd like to show you some of my baseball streaming setup, some of the equipment that I use to make the shots that we get at a baseball game the best they can be. I wanted to show what my mounting setup is for the Mevo Plus. It also works well for the Mevo Start because of the many points, uh, the, uh, the many joints that can be adjusted. Um, I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. The view we get from in between the squares of a chain link fence and the width that we have. You can see it covers the whole field. Usually I zoom in just to catch third base to first base because most of the action in a high school baseball game happens between first and third. And trying to get the outfield uh, with no uh, optical zoom is, is an exercise in futility anyway. Uh, so uh, back to this mount that I have. I'll put a link in the description, but uh, this is just a simple, uh, probably originally designed for a, a studio or desktop mount. Um, it, has, uh, it has three pivot points, and, uh, and what I've done is taken and zip-tied to the post. Now, a lot of folks I know really like to use the link spider, but I'll tell you why I don't. Most of the time, when we have games, someone is going to sit up close to the fence, and they're going to put their foot on the fence which means anything attached to the fence is going to move every time they move their foot. They're going to use the fence to pull themselves up out of the chair, which means when they pull themselves up out of the chair, it's going to move. So my go-to is to mount to one of these posts. And just about every uh, visiting ballpark we go to has these kind of posts. Now, some of them have the netting instead of the chain link, and that's okay. We can get around that as well. Uh, but mounting to something that is solid instead of mounting to a chain link fence that moves, to me, is a much better option. You never have to worry about repositioning in case the fence moved in a different direction and didn't come all the way back to where it was. The behind the plate view is the favorite that I have. Now, this one is just off of center, as you can tell. But that's okay. I can still get first to third. I still get a good over the shoulder from the umpire's, umpire's perspective. We get the pitcher-catcher exchange very well from this shot. But with Mevo's new multicam system that's coming out, we're also going to have the opportunity to run two cameras. I'll show you where I do the alternate view when I can't get behind the plate and where I'll have my second view when multicam is released to the public. I've moved over to the dugout so you can see my alternate setup for when I can't get right behind home plate for streaming. This will also be an alternate setup, the second view when multicam, when multicam is released to the public. Uh, I'm going to take the opportunity while I'm in the shade. It is June in Texas and so it is really hot right now. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity also to show you some of what I use on a given setup. Now, I said move to the uh, move to the dugout, first base or third base side, and what that allows us to do is take a, a tripod. Now, a, a tripod works okay, but actually um, a monopod or a selfie stick would work even better in what I'm about to explain to you to do. So if I take this little tripod, this is a, a very handy tripod. It's a uh, almost 50 inch or so, at fully extended, but it, it folds up to this size so it fits in my backpack. It is, uh, it's very, very handy. I, I love this. Um, it's a, it's a, a good useful tool, but it also uh, functions like a, a selfie stick would. The top does in fact swivel so that you get 
uh, whatever view you're looking for as far as that goes, and then these each, of course, extend. Now, uh, the, the reason this is a valuable tool is because whenever you combine this with my little setup bag here, when you combine this with some reusable zip ties, it has the little tab to open and close them there on the end. Reusable zip ties and a selfie stick will allow you to mount this setup on one of the posts at the edge of the dugout. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Maybe you can see that I've extended my selfie stick, uh, my monopod, to be just taller than the post here at the edge of the dugout. I'm going to take my reusable zip tie and I'm going to wrap around in between the joints of this monopod just so that it has something to catch on and does not slide down the post. Do a couple of those so that you have a good stable platform. Have your camera mounted on top of that and that gives us another view of this side of the infield. Home plate, first base, pitcher's mound, second base, not quite to third base, but it's an alternate view. It's not the main view. So this works really well for our multicam setup. So our tripod slash monopod is one of the things that fits neatly in the outside carrying pocket of my backpack but is an integral tool in this mobile baseball streaming setup that we have. A couple of other things that I would like to, uh, to highlight in this setup, I have the Verizon 7730L MiFi hotspot where I where I live, in, in this part of, the, of East Texas, Verizon has the best and fastest upload speed. It's the most dependable and it is the fastest upload speed in, in this part of the country. So that handles the lion's share of my mobile live streaming. In my bag of mobile live streaming equipment, you can see that I have the Ceramonic Blink 500. I'm using my wireless, my Rode Wireless Go system uh, as my microphone right now. So I'm not, I'm, I've shown you that whenever you've seen the lapel mic that's on me. I keep a couple of USB-C chargers here, a couple of other adapters that go along with this. I, I have the Rode Video Micro Me that I use whenever uh, wind is not an issue. That's a, a good pickup mic, especially for the crowd noise. Uh, if I want to run a couple of different uh, input sources. On the other side of my, my bag here, uh, I have the, the dead cat that goes with that Rode Video Mic Me um, to, to mount on there on, on the windy times, but I also have my, my Boost here in, in, in the Boost case and my, my Plus that I, I took back down from over there and, and my Start. Um, this is one of the best tools that I have. Uh, again, I'll put a link in the, in the description here but uh, this little Giotti uh, monopod or tripod top gives a full swivel in case I am stuck somewhere where I only have a straight stick to put it on or a mic stand to put, it, put my camera on. This gives me the ability to, uh, to make those adjustments needed, especially when trying to mount to see through a fence with the start or the plus. Another important piece to try to always be able to carry with you is a, a significant battery. Now I have this 20,000 milliamp hour battery that has both USB charging as well as AC uh, charging so it, uh, it, it can be turned on for the USB and then it can be uh, keep holding the button down and it will be turned on a second beep to let you know that the AC uh, plug is live. That allows me to uh, to charge whatever I need to charge. I know that, that the, the battery life on the Mevo Boost plus uh, the Mevo Plus together is about 10 hours, and so that's uh, longer than any game would be. The battery life on the start is, is six hours. That's, that's a couple of games usually for the way that, uh, that high school baseball games go. 
question, but I also know that a lot of you may be doing some pool play or some tournament play where you're playing back to back and then you're gonna have to, to play again that evening and, and, and there may be there may not be electricity that is available to you. So having that 20,000 milliamp hour battery, and, and you can find them in different sizes for reasonable cost uh, if you're gonna build a, a, a mobile live streaming solution. Um, that gives you the ability to charge everything back up. The, the iPad that I usually stream from is going to have an all-day battery life, but the ability to charge that. If I've run a couple of games that morning and still need to, to stream a game that evening, it gives me the ability to, uh, to charge up in between and, and, and not worry. I've, I've got these, uh, these wireless microphones that will need to be charged after, so, after a few hours. So uh, having that battery is, a, is a, an important part of putting together a, a mobile live stream, a baseball streaming, if you will, setup. Uh, the Mevo Start and the Mevo Plus to me are integral to that because of the, the ability to have different shots and to, to pan and zoom in those different shots. I mean, me just zooming here away from me and down onto my live stream setup to, to show what's in my, my bag of goodies there is, is one of the things that, that the Mevo is unique about it. I, I don't have to go to the camera and, set, and station myself there to do that. I do that from the streaming device. That was done on my iPhone just now. And so to be able to move from pitcher's mount and catcher to a first base as action changes over there can all be handled, of course, through the app. And that's the beauty of this uh, Mevo system. So I uh, just wanted to highlight today some of the things that make this Mevo uh, and this live streaming and this baseball streaming setup successful. Hope it's been a benefit to you and I'm glad to get to share with you one of my favorite things.